falls to cosine x plus 3 sine x minus 3 equals 0. You should be thinking about how these uh, how these are connected, cosine and sine. You might be thinking tangent, but that says tangent equals sine over cosine, and I don't really want to introduce tangent. I'm trying to get these all into the same trig function. Well, there is a Pythagorean identity. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. And if I look at these, I know that this one is the one that has the power of 2. So basically, I want to get cosine squared x equal to something. So over here, I can just subtract. From here, I get cosine squared equals 1 minus sine squared. And that's my substitution. Every time I see cosine squared x, I'm going to write what? 1, one minus, minus sine sin sin squared x. Write that. 1 minus sine squared x. Remember when you're doing that substitution? I just, I didn't highlight it, but I should have. Um, you're putting your substitution in parentheses. And I'm bringing everything down. I have a 2 here. Plus 3 sine x minus 3 equals 0. What do I have to do? We're going to have to distribute. 2 times 1 gives us 2 what? 2 sine squared x plus 3 sine x minus 3 equals 0. This is quadratic because it has a power of 2. Um, oh, before I do that. So in quadratics, you never want it to have a leading coefficient of negatives. You can do a couple of things. I'll probably combine like terms first. Negative 2 sine squared x plus 3 sine x. Um, and then these become what? Negative 1. Negative 1. So you can either move the whole expression, all of it, to the right side, or I can multiply both sides by negative 1. By multiplying by negative 1, what does it do? It just changes all the math operations. So now I get 2 sine squared x plus plus minus minus, minus 3 sine x plus 1 equals 0. <coughs> Remember this week we've been practicing solving these problems as if they were the variable x. 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. So we just need to factor that. So I have a times c. Positive 2. Your b value? Remember, you don't have to use my method of factoring, but it's just one method. Two numbers that multiply to be 2, but also add to be negative 3. Now I'm going to put this into my box. Those values go here and here. <coughs> Doesn't matter which order. But you do have to add an x. So basically what this is doing is we're just splitting that middle term. And then here you're going to write your first term, so 2x squared. And then your last term. I mean, next year if I have an awesome tech TA, I can just tell them to edit my videos. Because I can say right here where my finger is, they can click on a different video how to uh, practice more factoring. If I take out a GCF from this direction, what do I have? GCF this way. Think about it. 2x times something equals negative 2x. Negative 1. x times something equals negative 1x. Negative 1. And negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So now I can rewrite this as my factors 
let's put back sine in there, so I have sine of x minus 1 and sin 2 sine x minus 1. Class, can we split it now? Yeah. Let's split them. Because it's equal to 0, I can apply the 0 product rule. Sine of x minus 1 equals 0 and 2 sine x minus 1 equals 0. Let's solve this one over here. How do I do that? What's left? Ah, so let's see if we can take the inverse. So I have the inverse of sine of 1 equals x. On my unit circle, where is sine equal to 1? Only one location, right? Pi over 2. We'll just go ahead and quickly solve this one. Add 1 to both sides. Divide by 2. Take the inverse. The inverse of sine of one half equals x. I'm looking for where sine is positive. These two quadrants. I'm looking for one half. Pi over six and five pi over six, which is its reference angle in quadrant two. Pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. And how many answers do we have? Three. Three, so 